you have a responsibility to tell the people that this is going to take place. I'm like, wait a minute, I got something called the Bible and inside that Bible is the word of God and I'm going to put that on me and the enemy will not recognize my scent and be repelled from what you're telling me. Jesus, bless your name, Lord. <laughs> we praise your name. We praise your name. Woo, thank you, Jesus. You can take a seat. You can take a seat for a little while if you can. We're going to, this, this, this message today it's got me so excited. I actually had a jacket I was going to put on. I got so excited to preach the message, I forgot to put the jacket on. So anyway, that's okay. I'm going to start by saying this. This is a true story. There was a man back in, the, in one of the wars. I'm not sure which one it was, but he was in Germany, and he, he escaped a prison camp. And when he escaped a prison camp, they set these, these uh, dogs out to catch him. They just sent these you know, dogs that have these scents, and they just sent it out to catch him. And so the dogs were running wild, and the man was running through the woods from the dogs. And as he was running, he came across a dead skunk, and he rubbed the skunk all over him and then sat down against the tree. And the dogs came within three feet of him and could not smell him and was repelled by the scent of the skunk and turned around and went away. And the man went off to his freedom only to tell that story. And I sit there, and I thought about that when I heard that story, and I says, you know what's really wild is the enemy launches attacks on us every single day. His job is to launch an attack on us. His, the enemy's job is to not only launch an attack on us, but he's going to get us running. And either we're going to have the scent of the word of God on us, or we're going to have the scent of the world. And if we have the scent of the word of God on us, that enemy's going to get within feet of us and be repelled by the word of the most high God and turn around and leave us alone. Amen. So I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about, you know what? We have the world that we live in does nothing but alarm us every single day. You say, no, no, the, the news media informs us. The news media doesn't inform us. The news media alarms us every single day. And we have a choice when we hear the alarm of the news media. Now, there's a difference between being informed but not to the place of panic. Even Israel was alarmed. But when they were alarmed, it sparked them to make a move towards God. So what we need to start realizing is we are a body of people that are going to be sentenced to an alarm every single day because that's the enemy's job and he never forgets to do his job. He's never late for work. He never takes a day off. He just sets out and prowls the earth looking for us to alarm, to alarm us. But we have a choice. We can either react negatively and panic when we hear that alarm or we can silence the alarm. Amen. Amen. So I titled the whole message today, Silence the Alarm. Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm thinking of this, and I say, there's a, there was a king in, in, in the Old Testament, the king of Aram, and he was, he was uh, trying to attack Israel, but he got so frustrated trying to attack Israel because God had a prophet on the inside. And every time the prophet would, God would speak to the prophet, they would divert the plan of the enemy. Ooh, see, now listen, keep listening here. So we pick it up in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 11. It starts with verse 11. Watch what it says here. The king of Aram, this is who we're talking about. The king of Aram, he summons his officers and demanded them, tell me which one of us is on the side of the king of Israel because he is being diverted. The king of Aram is being, the, uh, the, the Lord is speaking to Elisha and he is diverting the plan of the king because God is speaking to Elisha and he's snitching on the king of Aram because God always has someone on the inside. Amen? And now that we have a someone, it's us that's on the inside. The word of God puts us on the inside. So the man responded to the king, and he said, none of us, my lord, king, said one of the officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words that you speak in your bedroom. Now, wait a minute. This is so amazing. Now, watch this. Watch what happens when man tries to take on God. 
This is what you have. When you start to understand the power of Jesus, when you start to understand the power of the Holy Spirit, then you're going to begin to realize that the alarm can be silenced by the word of God. Amen. Amen. So listen, now watch what happens. In verse 13, the king of Aram, with an arrogant attitude, he says, go and find him. That's what he said. Go and find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. Now, listen to these words really quickly here. It says, so I, meaning I, I'm going to fight God. I don't care, the king of Aram said. So I can send men and capture him, not send men to capture him, send men and capture him. It's already in his mind that he can defeat Israel if he has enough men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Keep listening. I love what he says here. Send, so, so, sorry, so I can send them and capture them. So I can send them and capture them. Every time I read that, I started thinking, who is man and what can he do to God? So I can send them and I can capture them. This is what happens in your world, is the world has so many people threatening you, and they have literally convinced you that if they send enough men, they can capture you. But, but we have got to understand who God is so we can silence the alarm of the world regardless of what it is that is coming against our minds. How do we do that? How do we say? Well, first of all, you have to understand something. You have to understand that if God is speaking to you through his word, which is, not, is yea and amen, and it cannot be changed, then who is man that they think that they can capture you? Who is man that they think that God will allow them to capture you? God has only allowed one man in the history of the world to be captured, and his name was Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He was captured so that the Holy Spirit could free him so that you will never be captured. Amen? The word is beautiful. The word is so beautiful. So watch what it says here. Watch what it says here. In, in the, continuing in the verse, it says, The report came back to the king of Aram. Your man, I, Elisha, is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and they surrounded the city. He sent a strong force. He sent horses and he sent chariots. He didn't send recruiters. He didn't, he didn't send like boot campers. He sent his strong force. He sent the Navy SEALs. He sent the elite. He sent those that knew how to fight, those that knew how to capture, those that knew how to kill, those that knew how to torture. He sent his best men to surround the city of Israel. Keep listening. You see, watch this. When the servant, oh, I love this. When the servant, Elisha's servant, of, of the man of God, got up and he went out early the next morning and army of horses and chariots had surrounded the city and the servant of Elisha came to Elisha and he says these words he goes oh no my lord what shall we do we are surrounded we're surrounded <laughs> this is not good <laughs> this is what we got to do Elisha listen listen Send word out to the camp. Pack your bags and start running. I mean, we need to alert it. We need, somebody needs to get on CNN and tell them we are over. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to set panic into the town so that they can know what to do. We, we, do you understand? We are surrounded. We are completely surrounded. We have no hope. There's nothing else we can do. We are surrounded. Now, if Elijah would not have stopped the madness, then the same problem would have happened that happened when they were supposed to go take over the land, the promised land, and they gave the bad report and created panic and lived in the desert for 40 years. So Elijah stopped it. But this, this is what we do as human beings. We set panic. We don't inform. We alarm and we alarm so much because it sells. And this is what happens in your life and in my life. So if you can remember back this far in the year 2000, boy, who'd have thought living, thinking back in 2000 was a long way back. But if you can remember the year 2000, 1999, the whole year was created for strict panic because Y2K. We are going to end with a computer glitch. The world is going to end with a computer glitch. And shame on the, the church because they wrote books about it. 
You're gonna, you need to store up this. And I had pastor friends buying food and, and storing it in their basements and, and water, just tons of water everywhere. Water was all over the place. I mean, there were water, just stacks of it and stacks of it in these churches and people's homes, their whole basement. They were selling stuff. There were people actually selling their car and buying diesel because there was a warning in one of the Christian books that the trucks would, the computers would fall on off of the tractor and trailers. And because their tanks are so big, you could just find trailers tractor and trailers all over the, the highway and you could siphon the gas out of there and put it in your car because their computer chips would fail. And people were buying this and they started making me feel bad. Joe is a man of God. You have a responsibility to tell the people that this is going to take place. I'm like, <laughs> there's this book that I'm reading. And it doesn't say anywhere in there that we're going to be captured by a computer glitch. Amen. Needless to say, it also says that no one will know the day or the hour, so midnight striking is not the end. Well, that's just irresponsibility, Joe. There are in their cases of water and there are 18 boxes of food and canned goods and this and this and bada boom, bada bing. And I'm sitting there going, you know what? Maybe they're onto something. So I went out. I went out New Year's Eve. I bought an extra bottle of water. <laughs> and I never drank it. The first place to strike midnight was Guam. Come on, man. Guam ain't losing anything. We ain't losing anything. <laughs> Come on. Think about that. That's, that's what we do. I mean, the, 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 the media feeds on tragedy. They, they come to inform us, but it's actually alarming us. And they come telling us about how we're going to crash. Because you know why? Because remember when we were, remember when some of you people that were born in the, in the 60s and 50s and 40s, I mean, when, when TV first started coming around, it was like the news. And then the news started, and then 30 minutes later, the news was over, and you didn't have to deal with it for the rest of the day till the next day. Now the news doesn't end. It keeps going. Why? Because they can, keep, they can keep selling ads in that newspaper. And that newspaper and the news magazines, billboards, media, uh, entertainment news. You got television news. You got CNN news. You got CBS news. You got news all day long reminding you how you're going to fail, how the enemy is going to capture you. And no one is out there saying, wait a minute, I got something called the Bible. And inside that Bible is the word of God. And I'm going to put that on me. And the enemy will not recognize my scent and be repelled from what you're telling me. Amen? People alarm you. They, they alarm you, but they don't always mean to alarm you. It's just nature, and it's okay to be informed, because even in the days of old, Jehoshaphat was informed, and then he was alarmed, but he didn't stay alarmed. He went to God and became unalarmed. He silenced the alarm. I'll say it again. He silenced the alarm. Daniel, we're going to throw you in a, in a lion's den. He silenced the alarm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego silenced the alarm. Amen. Peter, I mean, excuse me, Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, I can stop this crucifixion from heaven. He says, no, you can't. It's been sealed in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven, it came from my father. I'm here to finish a job. Silence the alarm. We can silence the alarm. We don't have to ever be running. We don't ever have to be captured. Amen? This is good stuff, isn't it? God is good. See, what we have to realize is, um, well, first, let me, let me, just, let me just continue in, in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. Right after Elijah was, was kind of like calming down, you know, the servant because he's in a panic. I mean, you would be too. You know, you're just like panicking because you're going to be the one dying with him. So as he starts to calm him down, I love what it says in verse 16. Elijah's like, you know, Elijah's like, like this godfather. And he's like, shh, shh, quiet, shh. He's panicking. But we can't. We're going to die. There's chariots and horses and everything surrounding us. Look, open your eyes, Elisha, and see. Open your eyes and see. Oh, eyes, Elijah's like, listen, 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 listen. Breathe into this. Sometimes you need this. This is the word of God. This is a metaphor for the Bible. This is a, this is a, a symbol for the Bible. Pick up your Bible and start breathing into it. 
Amen? Because if not, your eyes are going to see and you're going to convince yourself that that which is surrounding you is greater than that which is with you. Now, I love what he says. I love what he says. The prophet Elisha says this, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Amen? But Kate, the poor guy, the poor guy's like, <laughs> you want the bag again? So Elijah, seeing the panic in his servant, does what we should do when we see the panic in people that are with us. Instead of panicking with them, let's go against the flow. And this is what he said right here. And Elisha prayed. What a novel idea. He prayed and he said, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see what I'm seeing. Let him see what I'm seeing. And the only way that Elisha's servant could see what Elisha is seeing is because Elisha first prayed to see it. So what we're doing here is we're trying to calm people down without being calmed down even ourselves. So he says right here, he says, open the eyes. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw. Do you hear that? He looked and he saw. You see, you can look, but if you're not following the Lord and in his word, you're never going to see. You're going to look and continuously be looking, but you're never going to see. What did he see? He says right here, he looked and he saw the hills of filled with horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. You say, what does that mean? Watch this. It didn't say he saw chariots of fire all around Israel. They saw chariots of fire all around Elisha. God was showing the servant of, of Elisha the faith of Elisha. Amen? And your faith is so strong that it actually surrounds and protects those around you. But there's a time when they got to get their own faith or it's going to wear out. And it, it, when, I, when I read this, it's like the hor- there were chariots of fire. It's like... They were everywhere. Chariots of fire were all over the place. Can you imagine the servant of God? Here he is. Look, look. Here's the servant of God. He's like, open his eyes. <laughs> when did they get here? When did we get those kind of chariots? And they're on fire. They're on fire, and Marvel hasn't even been invented yet. Can you imagine the servant of Elisha? Can you imagine people that are around you when you start having the faith and the prayer life of Elisha that when the enemy comes, you have got the word of God spread all over you? And people will want to just stand next to you because they know as long as they're with you, the chariots of fire will surround them as well. Amen? Mm. I I love it. But see, we don't understand that. What if if this happened? What if what 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 I said was real? What if if we all started doing what I just said? Imagine this. Watch. Imagine this. I'm a news anchorman. Okay? It's the evening news. I never saw a news anchorman wear a pink shirt, but this is in honor of breast cancer awareness month. It really is. It really is. Here we go. Here's the news. In the news today, an update on category five hurricane Beelzebub. It's heading towards Florida. No need to worry. The news anchor team got together and prayed in the mighty name of Jesus and cast it back out into the sea. Residents of Florida never even got extra water. That, that's, how the, that's how the news would go. You see, you know what? It's, it's funny because my wife and I, we had a, um, there was a hurricane back in 1999, 1999, and I was flying back a red-eye flight from, so where was it? I was, it was California. So I flew all night. Well, I flew all night, but I couldn't sleep on the plane, so I wanted to sleep. And we had people at our house, and we were leaving to go to Georgia. 
because we had to get out. It was supposed to be a really bad hurricane because the news not, didn't only inform us, but alarmed us enough that I had two, three different families at my house. We were going to caravan out of the place. So I go, I, go, I just got to take a, I just got to sleep for like 30 minutes and then we can leave. Well, I fell asleep and didn't wake up for four hours. When I woke up, the news said that all of the, the, the highways and byways are jammed getting out of town. We can't leave. So now they're all coming against me. Way to go, Joe. You had to sleep. I said, Lord, you got to help me. So I stood, I promise you I did this. I stood out on the porch. I stood out on the front porch and I said, I can't remember the name of the hurricane. I said, you don't belong here. You get back out into the ocean in Jesus' mighty name. And I walked into the house and I said to my wife, I said, it's going to be okay. She said, what do you mean it's going to be okay? I said, I just cast the hurricane back out in the ocean. See, I was, this was like 20, whatever, 1999, how many years ago that was? 16 years, 17 years ago. I had enough faith in them days. Like I got now, I got today. My faith only builds today. From then, you have enough faith because you're just dumb enough to believe that the word of God says it'll do what it says it's going to do. Are you hearing me? And I love it because three hours later, the hurricane is turned. The hurricane is turned. Can you believe the people were still mad at me? They were still mad at me. I'm like, okay, God does a miracle for all of you guys and you're still mad at me? Shame on you. In breaking news today, <laughs> terrorists was in the center of New York City trying to detonate a bomb. The bomb did not go off, all due to last night's prayer that the President of the United States got on and said, we are the United States of America and no weapon formed against us will ever prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Just moments ago, we realized it got news. It's coming in now. Yes, gunmen. The, there was a gunman in, in the high school, in an Alabama high school, and was waving a gun around. The principal got on the intercom and began to pray in the mighty name of Jesus and commanded that gunman to put his gun down. Teachers began to pray. All the children began to worship. The entire school broke out in prayer and worship. The gunman dropped his gun, fell to his knees, and began to weep. Children surrounded around him and began to pray. No charges were held against him. Eighty-nine-year-old woman was being evicted from her house because she did not pay her taxes. Neighbors came together and paid the taxes for her. The woman is now living in her house. Martha brought over her apple pie all as well. What if the news sounded like that? But it doesn't because that doesn't sell. But it doesn't make a difference because, you see, you have kept, your news station can be saying the very same thing in your life. The enemy tried to attack me with a job loss. He, I got fired yesterday, but no need. My wife and I got together and prayed. I came to church. We began to worship God, and another job just came about. You see how this works? I'll tell you that in a second, but let me finish off with one more scripture. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. I love this, and you know what it is. Then Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. I, I love that. There's a crippled man, and he, Peter walks by him, and he's like, spare some change? Spare some change? Silver and gold I don't have. Watch what he's saying. Silver and gold. An army of self-protection I don't have. I do not have money for you. I don't have the power to do what the world says I need to do. I don't have the worldly wealth to do what the world tells me that I should do. I, I just don't have enough wealth to do this and to do that. And the enemy has got you so bogged down that you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this because I don't have what the world tells me I need to have. They have alarmed me so much that I can no longer survive in this world because I don't have what the world tells me I need to have. I don't have any silver and gold, but what I do have. I said, but what I do have, I will give to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Get up and walk. Amen. I'm exhausted. This, this blows me away. I just love this, man. Instead of taking authority on a situation with your ability, take authority on your situation with the Word of God. 
because you too will open your eyes. And you will, or, or shall I say, you will close your eyes and you will see chariots of fire all around you. And I love it because you know what? We have people in our church and we pray for the people in our church. And, and Angie right here, one night, one Tuesday night, we had a service right here. And all of a sudden, Angie's on the floor and I'm in the back. And they said, we got to take Angie to the hospital because she's having a severe asthma attack. And I went to the hospital afterwards and I saw her. And, you know, she was, she was like, <clears throat> you know, and we're praying for her. Father, in Jesus' name, I command that asthma to leave because the doctor said you have asthma. And the pulmonary doctor said you have asthma and you need to take this and you need to take this. And if this doesn't work, take this. And if you need to take this and you say, and yeah, side effects can occur. You know that. That's what they do. So she just is so now bogged down with the fact that she's going to do what the doctor said to do that she began to take and she began to take because that's what he said to do. And you trust the doctor, right? But you see, silver and gold I don't have. In other words, I don't have the knowledge of what the doctor says, but we're going to just keep praying. And we're so darn aggravated with that asthma that we began to pray. And so all of a sudden she goes, she says to me the other day, she goes, I'm going to an EMT, ear, nose, and throat doctor. Ear, nose, and throat. You know what I'm saying. ETM. What is it called? ENT, not EMT, ENT. And, and I'm going to, and the, and the ENT is going to take a, whatever you call it, a CAT scan, because I don't have asthma. I have a little something in my nose that if they fix it, I don't have to worry. It triggers asthma. So how in the world can you cast asthma out of somebody when you don't even have it? Yeah. Amen? So you don't call it asthma, you call it an infirmity, and you say, listen, I am no, no longer going to listen to the CNN of that doctor and the report that he gave me because in the name of Jesus, silver and gold, I don't have, but what I do have, I'm going to give to myself in the name of Jesus, take care of this for me. Amen? With that, I want you to stand up. Those of you watching online, as this thing goes off, what I want you to do is I want you to just put some worship music on and I want you to just worship Jesus. Just worship him. Because the enemy is going to put an alarm all over you every single day. And your job is to silence that alarm with the word of God. Did that bless somebody today? Good, because that's all I got. We don't want you to leave today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Bible says the only way to the Father is through the Son. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We invite you to take a moment and ask God to forgive you and to help you follow him on this journey. If you've made this decision today, make sure that you get into a church that teaches the word of God. And remember to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you're in the area, come visit us at any time. Check out times and location at orlandofamilychurch.com or at 407 462 one three five eight. Hope to see you there.